sweepstake action. Papers, here. Son. Yes, sir. Thank you. Hey, sweepstake action be here. All the lucky numbers here. Paper. Paper here. Sweepstake action be here. Paper. Paper. Hi, Grandpa. Hello, Mike. Say, hey, give me one of those. Maybe we won. <laughs> Maybe is right. But the chances are a million to one against you. Well, somebody's got to win. And I might be that one in a million. <laughs> Just think, Mike, you could give up selling papers and... What, me give up this corner after I had to look seven guys to get it? Nothing doing, Grandpa. But, of course, if, if you really did win, why... Paper here! Coming on the dead run. See you at supper time, Grandpa. Don't tell me you've got a winning number, Sanford. Uh, look, Jake, that ticket you sold me, it, it's a winner. Let me see. Is that so? Why, it's impossible. I mean, that's great. Uh, but, but it is my number, isn't it? Sure, sure. Just a mistake in printing the name, that's all. But I'll see that you got the dough all right. Now, you go right home and wait for me. Uh, well, that $2.60 I gave you is the luckiest money I spent. Uh, and as soon as I get my prize money, I'm going to give you a little present, Jay. No, thanks. It's your ticket. And winner take all. Uh, yeah, well, well, you tend to that for me, will you? Yes. Yeah, thanks. sold his winning ticket for ten dollars and I want to know how he feels. Of course, I already know. How he expressed himself. He must have been a dummy. He spoke with his hand. Oh. Uh, hello. What? Who? No, we haven't got anybody here by that name. Oh, oh, yes, we have. Just a minute. Gloria Sanford. Telephone. Thank you, Mr. Kendall. Hello. Oh, hello, Grandpa. You have a winning number. Some woman's name on it. Well, that is funny, isn't it? Yes, I'll tell Mr. Kendall. Right away, Grandpa. Mr. Kendall, my grandfather... I grandfather's... heard you. He's stuck with a phony sweepstake figure. Now, who sold it to him? I don't know. I was just... McIntyre. Coming. Yes, sir. This girl's grandfather drew a winning number on the sweepstakes. Oh, yeah? Do you remember me, Miss Sanford? I'm the reporter that took you to lunch today. You probably go on buying my lunches for a long time, too. Mr. Kendall says the tickets are fake. A fake? I'm terribly sorry, Gloria. Interview him. Find out who's behind it and who sold it to him. It's a racket. Get all the dope and we'll bust this graph wide open. Just like that, huh? Get going. Come on, Gloria. Hey, wait a minute. Romancing has spoiled a lot of scoops, McIntyre. And scoops have spoiled a lot of romances. Go ahead. Hey, sweet steak special here. Read all about it. All the lucky numbers here. Here you are, boy. Thank you, sir. You stay out of here. Why? Mr. Franco said I'd go in there any time I wanted to. Yeah? Well, I'd say you can't. Now beat it. Hey, listen, who do you think you're... What's the idea of trying to beat up a kid like this? Shame on you. Now, Mike and me lad, run along and peddle your papers. And let that be a lesson to you, Barney, me lad. It's a good thing for you, O'Reilly, come along when he did, you big palooka. Listen, O'Reilly, honest, I was just... Amstray! Amstray! Okay, O'Reilly. Thanks. Hey, Barney. Old man Sanford just grabbed off a winning ticket on the stakes. So what? So what? 
I sold it to him. And I still say, so what? And you're the guy that printed it. You're kidding. That's what you think. But you slipped up somewhere in numbering those plates. Huh? Come on. We've got to give Franco the lowdown and find out what to do. Come on. see Mr. Franco. Uh, you can't see Mr. Franco. He's busy holding a kind of reception with a mess of, of quality people in his office. <laughs> well, that's all right. I'm quality people, too. But I got lots of time. Yeah. You're terrific! Thanks. Mr. Franco catches this act. Now, as I was saying, it's in your hands. Why, you can make this the juiciest racket in the country. The plates are now ready for the tickets on the next sweepstake. I'll have the books here in a few days. And I want each and every one of you to make a record sale. Our goal is to be a million dollars on this next drawing. That's talking, Franco. We'll get it. Go out and get your territories organized. Come on, Come on us, boss. I'm Come counting on every you. single one of you. You're going to be proud of little Clara. I'm always proud of Clara. But I've made some very special connections. Well, what's on your mind? I peddled one of our tickets to old man Sanford, and it turns out to be a winner. Now some woman out in Iowa claims to have the real one. There's going to be a squawk. KG 131313. This isn't one of our tickets. There should have been another three in front of those numbers. I thought I destroyed all of them off that plate. You once got seven years in the pen for thinking. Now get that ticket back. It'll be a sense to shut up old man Sanford. Get this, you two. We're on the biggest thing we've ever pulled. And I'm not going to have it messed up by any rough stuff. Now get that ticket back. Well, how'd you like my pep talk? Oh, it was a masterpiece. There isn't a football coach in the country that could have done better. <laughs> Say, did you mean that soft soap you handed Clara? Want me to think of you as a blonde, green-eyed monster? Oh, no, but I... Uh... Oh, forget it. It's only business. A pat on the back and a little praise makes her happy. What harm is there in it? Oh, none, I suppose. Of course but... there isn't. You want to do me a little favor? <laughs> Certainly. Check with the engraver about the new plates and hustle them along all you can. No, I'll call him right away. <laughs> hello, Mike. Uh, hello, Mr. Franco. Here's your paper. Oh, thanks. Here's your change. Oh, that's all right. Keep the change. Gosh, thanks. Want to watch some tryouts? Sure. Come on along. Hello, Delroy. Let's see your act. Right. Sonny, twinkle your toes for Mr. Franco. Stomach. Oi, this will slay ya. Oh, you're gonna put on a new show, Mr. Franco? Well, we'll see about that. Swing it, sir. That's class. What class? I'm gonna suck that drunk. The best customer. 
opens and closes the club and serves himself and pays. You throw that drunk out or I walk. Thank you for coming. Bring on your other act. Mary Ann. Don't say she ain't class. She's a looker. I'm only interested in a voice. Swish goes my heart. When you are near, swish go my arms. Around you, dear, I keep on saying it's you I adore. My heart is beating like waves on the shore. You are the song, the sweet melody. I am the words, and thus it will be. Here is the thought I beg to impart. You're just as delish as the swish of my heart. Swish goes my heart. When you are near, swish go my arms. Around you, dear, I keep on saying it's you I adore. My heart is beating like waves on the shore. You are the song, sweet melody. I am the words, thus it will be. Here is the thought I beg to impart. You're just as delish as the swish of my heart. That's all, girlie. Say, what is this, amateur night? Looks like it. Here, you won first prize. Kind of sore, ain't he? <laughs> <laughs> Look, Mr. Frankel, I don't like to butt in, but do you need a girl singer? Well, you know that, Mike. Well, look, I've got just the one. She's got looks, personality, and a swell voice. And, well, I, 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 she's got about everything. The boy press agent, eh? <laughs> don't tell me you have a sister. Well, well, how'd you guess it? <laughs> Bring her around, Mike. I'll listen to her. Do you mean it? Of course. Well, when can I bring her in? Today? Anytime. Gosh, Mr. Frankel, you're about the swellest guy I ever knew. Hello, Mr. Sanford. Meet my friend. Glad to meet a winner. Congratulations. My friend's gonna fix up things about that ticket. Oh, that's fine. I'm glad to meet you. Hand over that ticket. Well, uh, I, er, uh, uh... Make it snappy, Mr. Sanford. You know, it takes time to fix up things like this. Well, what's the matter? I can't give anybody that ticket. It's my only proof I won. You can't collect with a ticket in your pocket. And I'm guaranteeing this man. I can't give you the ticket. Get his wallet, quick. I ain't here. Why, you've... I didn't mean to do it. Hey, sis! Sis! Hey, I got swell news for you. Oh, we already know true. What do you mean you already know and it's not true? How do you know you weren't there? There? Where's there? What in the world are you talking about? Now, wait a minute, wait a minute. One at a time. First, I just left Mr. Frankel. Second, I told him he had a swell voice, looks, personality. That's a pretty big build-up, Mike. Quiet, no remarks from the galley. And he said you could come in any time you wanted to to try out. Oh, Mike, that's wonderful. Now, you don't mean Frankel who runs the 40 Club. Well, sure thing, why? Well, you can't sing there, Gloria. Why, well, that's just a dive. What do you mean, dive? That's an A number one joint. No, it isn't. Oh, now, Lord. wait a minute, no. boys. Maybe I'm not good enough to sing at this diver joint. <laughs> well, don't worry about it. <laughs> That's just it. You're too good. Oh. <laughs> Grandpa. He 
he's dead. Come in. What did you do, bungle it? I didn't have nothing to do with it. Well, if it isn't a secret, tell me about it. Old man Sanford croaked. I didn't do it. We'll go into that later. Let's have the ticket. He wouldn't come through with it. I didn't mean to pull any rough stuff. Honest. But he must have had a weak pump. Hey, this must be on the spot. I sold a ticket to the old man. Listen, I've got to get out of here. And it's up to you to help me. Now I go down to the plant and stay there. I'll figure out something. I'll go on, beat it. I don't often make mistakes in men, but I'm wondering if I didn't when I picked you to take charge of things. What do you mean? This Sanford mess in the paper. It was only an accident. The boys were trying to get back a ticket we sold him. Why? It was from the plates we destroyed. You know, with the right numbers. It turned up a winner. You should have paid him off. Sixteen grand? What's that compared to the millions we stand to make? But I thought you... Listen, I'm doing the thinking for both of us. Understand? Yeah. Where is the ticket? I don't know. If it shows up, pay it. Is that clear? You're giving the orders. Remember that and we'll get along fine. Oh, Ed, why would anybody do this to us? Oh, don't worry, honey. We'll straighten it up. Sit down. Boy, they went through this place like a cyclone. I wonder who did it. I don't know. But I believe it was somebody who was after that ticket. What ticket? Your grandfather's sweepstake ticket. But you said it was a fake. It is. Oh, cut out the kid, Ned. If it is a fake, what would anybody want with it? I hesitated to say anything about this until now. But it's better for you to know what you're up against. Well, what is all this mystery stuff anyway? You needn't be afraid to tell us. In spite of the fact the coroner pronounced your grandfather's death due to natural causes, heart failure, I'm convinced there's something behind it all. Go on, please. Well, first, your grandfather held a questionable sweepstake ticket with a winning number. Now, immediately after the winners were published, your grandfather was found dead. Under conditions which, to me at least, indicate a struggle took place. Then we find your house in this condition. Well, obviously, somebody is after that ticket. Yeah, but they didn't get it. How do you know? Because I've got it here. Where did you get it? It was in back of Graf's watch. I guess he hit it there when he thought it was a lucky number. It certainly looks like the real thing. I've got a hunch if we find out who sold this ticket to him, we'll solve your grandfather's death and learn who's behind this sweepstakes ticket racket. I know who sold it to Grandpa. You do? Who? A fellow named Jake. He hangs out down at the 40 Club. One of Franco's boys, eh? Well, that doesn't look so good for Franco. Well, from what Michael tells me, Mr. Franco's a fine man. Well, if you think Franco's double-crossing us, suppose you give us the lowdown. Well, all I can tell you is that Franco's been mixed up in a couple of rackets in the past. And if this fellow Jake is one of his men, then Mr. Franco is the brains of the whole setup. I think you're wrong. Of course, there's always a possibility. Listen, I'll prove you're wrong. Yes? How? Well, I'll bet you if I take this ticket to Mr. Franco and explain everything to him, he'll do all he can to help us. Hmm, maybe. But chances are a thousand to one that Franco will tell you to run along and sell your papers, or else he'll take the ticket away from you. Just to prove you're wrong, 
I'm going to take this ticket over to Mr. Franco tonight. No, Mike, you mustn't. Don't worry, Gloria. I'll go along and see if nothing happens to him. I'll tell you, boss, we first that apartment from top to bottom. And that ticket ain't there. Mike's right, boss. I got a hunch one of those Sanford kids is carrying the ticket on him. I'll uh, wait for you here. All right. We must get that ticket. Bad publicity now would ruin everything. down over here and tell me all about it. Now, what's wrong? Well, somebody just wrecked our flat. Wrecked your flat? What do you mean, dynamite? No. Just, well, they tore it all up, that's all. Don't be so mysterious about it. Tell me. Well, I've got that fake sweepstake ticket that Jake sold to Grandpa. What makes you feel it's a fake? Well, it, it's listed as a winning number. But some lady in Iowa is named as the holder of the ticket. Maybe I can help you. Gee, I knew you would. Have you got it with you? Yeah. It's right here. Looks all right. But you feel it's a fake. Is that it, Mike? Well, that's how it stands, Mr. Franklin. Jake sold you this ticket. I'll gamble it's the real thing. And to prove it to you, I'll make you a sporting proposition. If this ticket is good, it's worth $16,000. If not, it's worth nothing. I'll give you $5,000 for it. You will? Gee, you're a square guy. I knew you'd help us somehow. Is it a deal? You bet. Shake it. Good evening, Mr. Whitley. <laughs> good evening, my sheriff. Sorry, old man, but I was just practicing. Last night, when that sour tenor was doing his stuff, I, I, I got the, pardon me, <laughs> I got the hiccups and couldn't hiss. Well, don't feel so bad about it, old man. I'll help you hiss. Thanks, pal. Thanks. That's all right. Do you uh, come here often? Thank you, pardon. Yeah. You'll come here often. Yeah. Good. Five thousand. Is that right? That's right. I sure hope you win. Want me to send somebody along with you? No, I'm not scared. So long, Mr. Franco. So long. So long. Send Button Spike in here. Come on. Let's go in and hear something. Go ahead, I'll be right with you. But the show's coming on in just a minute. Well, you carry on for both of us. All right. But don't be long. It's hard work hissing for two people. <laughs> hey, Ed. Look what Mr. Franco gave me. What? $5,000. Don't do anything like that in a place like this. Why not? Want me to take it? No, no, I'm all right. All right, let's get out of here. to be carrying down such a dark street. I'd like to see anybody get it away from me. Thank you. 
Mike. Mike, are you all right, Mike? They got the money. I'm sorry, Mike. But I guess that's just the way Franco planned it. Come in. Oh, hello, Mike. I'm glad you came back. I wanted to talk to you. Hello, Jordan. Hello, Lieutenant. Mike? You were right about Jake. That cheap state ticket was a fake. You knew it was when you bought it. That's why you sent your men to stage the holdup. What holdup? The one that got you back your $5,000. Do you believe that, Mike? Well, no, only I thought that... If that deal wasn't a cover-up, why should you give the kid $5,000 for a questionable ticket? Well, I feel sorry for Mike and his sister. I nearly took a gambler's chance. If it worked out, I got 16,000. If I lost, I was out five. How did you know that ticket wasn't any good? I called Dublin. Oh, you called Dublin. Then I called the police. Check with the telephone company, will you, Lieutenant? Long distance, please. Hello, long distance. This is Detective Lieutenant Gray of the Homicide Squad. I want to know if there's been a call put through from this phone for Dublin, Ireland. There was? About 20 minutes ago? Thanks. All right, Mr. Franco. We'll go out and see if we can pick up your slippery friend, Jake. Come on, boys. Sorry to have bothered you. <laughs> Not at all. Drop in any time. Well? That doesn't mean a thing. So you thought I framed you? No, I didn't, Mr. Franklin. It wasn't my it's idea. It's all right, Mike. I don't blame you. Here. Take this. I'm awfully sorry you lost your money. Oh, no thanks, Mr. Franklin. We can't take any more money from you. Gosh, it's my fault you're stuck for five grand already. Bring your sister in. She's as good as you say she is. I'll put her to work. Oh, I'm sure you're going to like her. I won't object at all, McIntyre if you print what's in your mind in tonight's paper. Wouldn't you like the follow-up better? It would read something like this. Franco sues Harold for libel. Well, way ahead of me, aren't you? When I break this story, Franco, you won't be in any position to appreciate it. Come on, Ed. Come on. What I said the last time I talked to you didn't make any impression, did it? Oh, but look, after all, five grand is five grand. I couldn't let it get away. You're a petty larceny crook at heart, and you'll never be anything else. I made dough before I ever tied up with you. For two cents, no, I... No, you wouldn't. Not for two cents or two million. You're in it up to your neck. Same as the rest of us. I'm beginning to wish I never tied up in this. Wishing isn't going to do you any good, Franco. Nobody ever walks out on me. If you make one more blundering move, if you do one single thing without orders from me, Where's Ed? There he is over there. angry with me because I took this job, isn't he? <laughs> Don't worry, he'll get over it. Hello, oh, well, Gloria. Hello. Hello, Hello Mike. Mike. May I join you? Sure. You look very lovely tonight, Gloria. Thank you. Frightened? Oh, not a bit. Good. All you need in any line is a little confidence. Right, Mike? That's right, Mr. Franco. Well, 
well if it isn't my old friend McIntyre. Hello. Uh, mind if I sit? Thank you. You look like you just lost your last million. How about a little snort to cheer you up? Suits me. But remember, no hisses when Miss Sanford is singing. Certainly. Absolutely not. Thank you very much. And now, ladies and gentlemen, we give you a little lady that really needs no introduction. The pride and joy of the 40 Club, charming Miss Gloria Sanford. Let's give her a nice big round. Saxophone. <coughs> it went, went down the wrong side. Uh, maybe it was a little too strong for you. Strong? It's bad liquor. I'm going home. Well, look who's here. Come in. Come Thanks. in. Uh, 
Uh, sarsaparilla seems to be a mighty potent drink, old man. Yes, potent enough for all practical purposes. So you found me out, McIntyre. I don't know whether it was deliberate or accidental. However, it doesn't make much difference to the result, just the same. What's the big idea? Here's the explanation. I'm investigating the counterfeit sweepstake tickets that are flooding the country. You seem to know me, but I can't quite place you. Hmm. I'm Mrs. Whitney's little boy, Reggie. <laughs> well, that still doesn't tell me very much. I thought I knew all the boys in the department. If you had recognized me, I'd have been disappointed. You see, I just work up the evidence, then turn it over to someone else to handle. I never appear in court. Publicity would ruin my usefulness. Oh, I see. An undercover man. Oh, uh, careful little drink. Don't feel that I need one right now. You know what I drink. Yes. Have one of mine. Mm, thanks. Don't mind if I do. You must have discovered something that led you to the 40 Club. Suspicions, that's all. And I was just about to conclude that I was wrong when uh, you made your appearance. I don't quite understand. Well, uh, you don't usually go off on a wild goose chase. Thanks. There's uh, no use of our working at cross purposes, is there? None at all. Have you uh, struck any leads? Until tonight, I thought I was up against a blank wall. You mean you stumbled across something? Well, it was more good luck than anything else. About a year ago, I was able to help a girl out of a jam with the police. She has a bit of a record. Maybe you know her, Myra George. The name isn't familiar. I saw her tonight at Franco's. Does she know him? Undoubtedly. That's great. A fling at the bright lights with Myra, and I'll have everything sewed up. Wait a minute. That's a swell idea, but there's only one thing wrong with it. What? I'll do the whining and dining with her. See you later, Reggie. town we missed? A couple. I'll show them to you tomorrow night. <laughs> oh, I've heard of perpetual motion, but I never believed it existed until I ran into you last week. You ain't seen nothing yet, baby. Shall I answer? Oh, don't bother. Be a dear and get me a cigarette, won't you? I prefer one of my own brand. Uh, they're on the table over there. All right. Hello? Yes? Sorry, I, I just got in. I've been calling you every five minutes for the last hour. Where have you been? I have a friend with me, Ed McIntyre. Just one of my busybody friends. Uh, that's right, McIntyre, reporter for the Herald. He's over there with her now. Now listen to me and don't make any mistakes. do my very best. Strange how inquisitive people are when they're talking on the phone. Isn't it? <laughs> how well do you know Franco? Oh, uh, just slightly. I, I met him when I was singing at the 40 Club. You didn't know I could warble, did you? No, I didn't. Here, hold it. 
I'll sing you a number that was written specially for me. To resist you would be like fighting the wind. I can't do it. I've just got to give in. For your charms are like a magnet. All the things they do. My heart was caught in a dragnet and I can't escape from you. It's so foolish to think of running away. I can't leave you. My heart tells me to stay from the moment that I kissed you. I knew that love had begun and to resist you couldn't be done. Huge, isn't it? Very. Now let's get back to what we were talking about. Franco? Yes. He was here today, wasn't he? Did he tell you he was? He didn't have to. Well, what about them? That's what I'm asking you. For publication or just between the two of us? Does it make any difference? As a matter of fact, it doesn't. Get rid of whoever that is at the door and I'll tell you. your heart to bounce around just like a ball. You better be on your guard cause spring will make you fall. Don't you know it's the time when Miss Gloria improves every day. Well, I told you she was good. Don't you go out at night cause spring will make you fall. Now would there be any harm if a wind blew from the sea and swept me into your arms? What lovely wind that would be. Go out and buy some brand new clothes when Mr. Romance comes to call. You gotta be all prepared cause spring will make you fall. That was excellent, Gloria. You used that number in the show tonight. Do you want me to try it again, Mr. Franco? No, that'll do. Uh, Mr. Franco, may I see you a moment, please? You'll excuse me, Gloria. <laughs> Gosh, honey, you're the tops. Oh, I knew you'd think so. <laughs> now, what is this notebook? Mr. Jake's in your office, boss.
What do you mean by coming in here? They brought that reporter to the hideout. I'm not going to be in on another murder. You're not, eh? No, I'm skipping the country. You'll do exactly as I tell you. Maybe that would be the best thing for you to do. Look, Gloria. Uh, well, I've been practicing an act. And I want you to see it and... Well, tell me if it's good enough to show to Mr. Frankel, will you? <laughs> Why don't you do it right now? All right, I will. Here, you sit down. You know, you can't tell. Maybe you and I will be doing a brother and sister act here. All right, now, you ready? Okay. I really do. Why don't you go and talk to Mr. Franco right away? I'm practically there. Good luck, Michael. I, I don't stop at anything except murder, boss. You know that. Who said McIntyre would be killed? Well, you know what happened to old man Sanford? No, there's enough money to last you. The Samaria sails at midnight. See that you're on board. Crosser. Telling me you were my friend and then killing my granddad. Yeah, and you're trying to do the same thing to Ed. Close the door, Jake. Mike, what is this? There's the guy that's responsible for Granddad's death. I'm sorry you came here, Gloria. I'm very fond of you and Mike, but this makes things a little difficult. Jake, tell Spike to bring the car to the side entrance. What are you going to do? What can I do? Send you both home. Say, what's up between you and this Sanford girl? You're not idiot enough to think I care anything about her. You've been following her around like a dog on a leash. Well, I had to throw her off the track after what happened to her grandfather. By sending her home in your car? I'm not sending her home. I don't care what you're doing with her. I'm walking out of here once and for all. Wait a minute. Not a minute. Not a half a minute. I'm through. I'd certainly hate to be in your boots. The police picked up Jake a little while ago. Think that over. Hello. Franco speaking. When will those tickets be ready? Boys, I called you here because I'm going to Palm Beach on business. And I want you to get started selling the books. I may be gone some time, and I don't want my absence to keep you from making a cleanup. We're not likely to run into any trouble, are we? Oh, not at all. If there's any suspicion on part of the police, they'll be watching me down there. That'll make it clear in all the other districts. I can't use checks. I said cash. There's two grand. There's your package, Lou. Lots of luck. Oh, Randall. May I? Blake? Jackson? Winters? Cliff. Now you're all set. So long, so long, so long. Well, have a good trip. We'll be seeing you. Thanks. Franco is cashing in all the tickets and planning to make a getaway. Where's he going? I don't know. But he's sure to go to the plant first. Where's the plant, Jake? Come clean. Why are the counterfeit plates? I don't know what you're talking about. Come on, Jake. You play ball with us, and we'll play ball with you. I'd help you boys if I could, but I, I don't know. Where's, where's the, the plant, Jake? Have a cigarette, Jake. Maybe it'll help you think. No, thanks. I'm tired. I don't want to think. Oh, you're playing dumb, eh? I'm not so dumb. Give me a drink of water. Sure, but tell us where the layout is first. Huh. Where's the plant, Jake? What plant? What do you think we're talking about? A flower plant? Where's the plant, Jake? I don't know. Where's the plant, Jake? Where's the know. plant, Jake? I don't know. I don't know. And I thought Franco was a swell guy. We've got to find some way to get out of here.
That's a quiet bunch in there. Any luck? No, they're tired of the drum. Well, we finally persuaded Jake to call. The tickets are printed 610 Redwood Drive. Swell. Come along just in case. There's your water. I got him covered. Give me the gun. See if you can find something to tie him up with. All right. Here, tie that guy up. Move. Mike, come here. First gun. He hasn't got a gun. What can we use to tie him up? I don't know. I'll go out and try and find something. All right, you. Get over there. Now it's my turn to tend to a little unfinished business. Nice party we're having. Yes, isn't it? Drop that gun. Rude of you not to have invited me. I hope my presence isn't an intrusion. I'd hate to embarrass anybody, especially a young lady. Get back there, you. All right, come on, get over there. Gloria, get over. All right, Franco, get in that corner. I suppose the 5,000 you gave me is in here, too, huh? You'll find it in that little package. Help yourself. No, thanks, Mr. Franco. Hey, Ed, I just found the printing press and about a million of those phony tickets down in the basement. Mike, you and Gloria take Franco's car and go after the police. Well, hadn't Gloria better go alone? You might need some help. No, you better go with her, Mike. Well, here's another one. Oh, hello, Whitney. Mike, meet Mr. Whitney. He's a special investigator on the case. Oh, well, the press wins again. Glad you got here, Whitney. If you take over these prisoners, I want to get my story in and call the police. Steady, McIntyre. This is one story your paper's never going to print. What? 
Come on, kid. Get in there. So you thought you'd run out on me. You know what happens to double-crossers. Look here, Whitney. These kids had nothing to do with this. They promised to keep their mouths shut. Will you let them go? There's only one kind of people that never talk. Do you mean you're going I to... I mean that I'm not taking any chances. Drop that gun! Hello, McIntyre. Hello, Lieutenant. This is the man we're after. All right, boys, put the cuffs on and we'll take him in. You put up a great fight, Ed. Oh, Mike was the one that did all the fighting. Well, you deserve all the credit. <laughs> Not any more than Mike. Well, what's the difference? We'll just keep it in the family. Haven't I anything to say about this? Not a thing. I'm the head of this family. Oh, no, you're not. Well, uh, I was.